What up everybody, Zeta Zulu back at it again with another review for you. Today we have the final entry in our Overwatch Week reviews, Figma Tracer. Now, she is the first Figma in Overwatch's Figma line, and she, as the poster girl of the game, was a good place to start. She is chock full of such amazing detail. And one thing I must say is she's more based off of the cinematics than more than her in-game model. Like a lot of the details are shared between, but you'll see it more in the face. It's definitely a lot more akin to that than what we have in-game. And that's not a bad thing. It still looks phenomenal and amazing. Like let's let's bring her in a little bit closer. You can see that nice face sculpt. This really well done hair. Her coat has all wrinkles, has wrinkles and whatnot through it. It's got her her Air Force logo, the British logo or the British flag. You got the T O one on her little arm things. Her chrono accelerator is really well done. It's got some raised clear blue plastic on the front and the back it's just really well detailed all the way through you can got the tracer down the side of her leg and whoops she's balding a little and that's i'll get into that in a second that's one minor gripe i have with the figure uh even her space crocs are really well done i mean future crocs uh, she also sports some really good posability like her head can wiggle around, rotate side to side, look up, look down pretty far. Uh, her shoulders are kind of on this double ball joint. They can go out, rotate 360, go in, I believe. Okay, she isn't one of the ones that has like the joint where you can pull it out, but you get a bicep swivel or bicep rotation up here and a rotation at the elbow down here like at the, her jacket cuff you get 90 degrees eh, a little more than 90 degrees of bend the wrist are on a figma joint so then go forward and back rotate kind of get whatever you want out of it and there goes her hair once more her waist is ball jointed so it can rotate go arc back that far forward that far get a lot of good motion out of it now her legs are a little bit hindered because of how they decided to do the straps like they're act like the upper strap right here is actually connected to her waist so you can get it to go forward and back a little bit out to the side and you get the rotation but that's a problem it, it can pop off and then it's a pain because you have to feed it through the little loop strap and then make sure you get it back on the ball joint. But once you do, it's on there and it's secure. Get a really good bend in the leg, in the knee I mean. And then her ankles can go forward a little bit, back a lot more, and pivot side to side and get a toe bend in her future Crocs. So she can get some like she can pose like she'll you can get in her what you need her to get into but just be wary of the legs and things popping off and in my case be wary of knocking her hair out like that might just be a problem with mine but just be wary of it across the board if it is something that's well widespread with the figures now as far as accessories I'm going to start at the top and go down as we usually do. So, well, that's just going to help. She does come with two alternate faces. Let's get her standing a little bit. So we can, you know, it's helpful, but we'll put it back on because it's, it's not a good look. So, get this kind of happy, jovial expression. It's a nice face, really adorable. You can get this more kind of, well, 
this more oh geez it's going everywhere it's kind of sly smirking face come on focus I'm like giving you the side eye like oh yeah I just post bombed your stuff what you gonna do about it and to swap the faces off just as easy as the nendroids and whatnot just hold on let me refocus just pull off the hair or in mine's case fall off and then you just pull out the face and swap on a new one and it just plugs in and you plug your hair back in uh, if it would want to cooperate whatever and now she's got a new expression on her looking quite adorable now as far as hands you get them on this nice little tree of hands so we'll go over these on here and we'll demonstrate how to swap them out so you get some kind of generic grabbing holding things hands for left and right you get her two kind of specialized hands one for throwing a pulse bomb the others for kind of waving her little two finger wave if she does this she has love you get two trigger finger hands specific for holding her guns and then two splayed open hands for whatever posing needs you might have so show off swapping on her cheers love hand that's what I'm gonna call it so you just bring her in grab her arm and just pull just pops right off and the new hand pops right on in just boom you'll hear a nice little snap and then boom you got a cheers love pose tilt her head a little put it out and boom now she's waving at you give you a nice little greeting and skirmish now as far as weapon related accessories as I've mentioned before she does come with a pulse bomb we'll get to that in a second she comes with two of her little pulse pistols and these are really well done definitely better than the nendroids just because they pack in just that much more detail in there hold on there we go it's now focused like the silver the little trigger there the arrows on it the 33 which was not on uh, it's 39 my bad I might be a little bit illiterate and it's got a little bit of a blue glow going through it now these are best to be held by her trigger finger hands which we're just gonna take off and demonstrate how to get one of them in it's a little little bit more difficult than I'd like but how I like to do it is I kinda just like to have it come in from the side and wedge it in and then slide the hand up the handle and rotate it until it's basically gripping it how you need it to and then you can just pop this on and voila One. yeah there we go it's on now she has her pulse pistol as well so she's armed to be both friendly and combative just like the tracer we know and love now her other accessory is her pulse bomb and eh, I have a hard time saying which one I liked better the nendroids or this figma one but has just about the same details I was about to say they're exactly the same except uh, as you saw in my nendroid review it was basically a flat surface this has a little bit of an indent to it there's nothing it plugs into still but eh, it might, might be a little bit more helpful like put a little bit of sticky tack in there, a little piece of tape like on the back side and just stick it on something and I'll show off that hand that can hold it, I'm not going to attach it to Tracer but basically it's kind of molded to fit in 
Well, let me re-grab the pulse bomb. It's bullet to fit in, so it can look like she's about to hurl it at somebody like a discus. Just yeet. And her last accessory, well, she has she basically has two more accessories. The standard Figma bag, which is what you can put all of your Figma's parts in, and the patented, well, it probably is patented by Figma or Max Factor or whatever, but the Figma stand. And it's basically just a three-arm stand, has a little connector, and this one's a bit special. You kind of got, uh, you got Blizzard's logo and a lot of their legal jargon in there, like on the back side of it. And it looks it's interesting. Looks nice. You can you can probably expect any Blizzard IP'd Figma to have that on their stand. Which is really cool. And it just plugs into Tracer's back into her Chrono Accelerator, which pretty pretty clever. Just you just work it on in there. Don't be too rough. Just want to make sure it's nice and secure. And now she's up on her stand, looking quite rad. Now, for comparison, I will actually bring in a figure I have already reviewed. Give me one second. And we're back, and for comparison, I have brought Figma Ryuko Matoi as a comparison. And they're, they're about... Similar height, Ryuka has her beat a little bit just by her hair, but not bad, not bad. They 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 look kind of good together, I'd say. Two different genres, one's an anime, one's a game character, but they look good. They'd probably chill and uh, grab a drink if Ryuka was of age. And now, the comparison I've always wanted to do, Figma Tracer with her Nendoroid counterpart. And as you can see already, they are vastly different in what they portray of Tracer. Like, this definitely represents what you'd see in animated shorts and whatnot. And this kind of represents if her cute spray came to life. Both do a really, really good job of portraying the character in a very solid, positive light. And I'd say both these figures do a really good job of portraying Tracer in a really good, positive light. Now, since this is the last of the Overwatch Week reviews, I figure it'd only be fitting to bring in the rest of the current high-quality Overwatch figures that have been released. And even with one of them being of a slightly different scale... I would still say they all look good together. Like, you can never have too many Tracers. And you can never have too many Mercies, Maze, etc., etc. So, this has been Zeta Zulu, and this has been our Overwatch week. Uh, so far, every figure, Nendroid or Figma, has been pretty solid. Minus Tracer's hair, I suppose. And... I would definitely recommend these figures. If you see them anywhere, your local Target, your GameStop, your Best Buy, whatever, you won't be sorry for picking these up if any of these are heroes you have an interest in. Or if you just have a passing interest in high-quality, cute girl figures, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know my fan base yet. But, yeah, that's Zeta Zulu signing out with Overwatch Week. Hope y'all have a good weekend. Deuces.